Dr. Mitchell, thank you for affording the Barnacle this opportunity to speak to you on the issue of vaccination and COVID-19 in general. Despite the availabilities of thousands of vaccine doses and the relentless educational process undertaken by the Ministry of Health and others, about 10% of the Grenadian population has been vaccinated to date. How difficult is it for you to accept this as a Prime Minister? Well, it's, it's, it's very difficult and, and to some extent painful because you, you as, as, a, as a leader of the country and of course, someone who identifies well with what is best for ourselves as, as a people. It, 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 it does create a problem when you see that we do not seem to show an understanding of concerns for our own welfare. Um, you, might, you might want to say, I do not care about this person or that person, but you must care about yourself. And it seems to me that the, the, the emphasis outside there is so well known that this virus is dangerous. It can, in fact, um, cause the demise, physical demise of healthy people. We've seen it. And even the people that, that got, got the virus and they were able to survive some of the damage that is done to the organs, some of them has, has, at this point in time, has done very lasting. And, and therefore it must be upsetting and painful watching this. I, I, my own feeling is that there's some of us who are in responsible position, who use our leadership position to spread a lot of misinformation. And that is even worse. To my mind, even if you if you don't want to take the virus, the, virus, the vaccine, then it seems to me that the least you can do is to shut your mouth and let others protect themselves. But to encourage others not to take it is to me reckless and irresponsible. And therefore, as that viewers question asked, yes, it's painful to watch us uh, to. Uh, literally almost do things that can factor out ourselves. And I say over and over, this process of vaccination and, and living within the protocols and, and all that we have to do to protect ourselves, it's not a partisan issue. So everyone should be involved. As a political organization, and we, we have been out to my constituency uh, on, on Wednesday, yesterday, sorry, Tuesday, yesterday, and with a vaccination day. And I went there because I wanted to show the people of uh, my appreciation for their coming and vaccinating to protect themselves. And I say to members of the opposition group that you should do the same thing. The same facility is there. And I don't see any reason why you could not come yesterday. But even if you feel that you don't want to identify with any particular politician, then do it. But protect yourself and protect those who love you. And that's, that's my message. Vaccination saves lives. Why are Grenadians so unwilling to step up and receive the vaccine? Well, I think misinformation must be um, a major factor. Uh, and I think there is an element of fear. Um, some people are, are hearing that you, you get um, blood clot. Some people are passed away after taking the virus, uh, the vaccine, sorry. And um, that could be a, a factor. And one has to understand the human being, how he thinks. But if you look at the statistics, you're not even sure the cause of the vaccine, um, taking a vaccine, vaccine has been the issue. We're not sure. Because if you're talking one person getting a blood clot out of a million doses, I'm sure if you take any part of the population, any medication or, or, or illness, I'm sure you'll find one blood clot or more <laughs> among, among that population. So I'm not even sure that there's a factor. But even then, the statistics is, is demonstrate that it's, it's reasonable. 
reasonably successful. And therefore, statistically, it makes sense to vaccinate. The alternative is that I tell people, some go, they're aware they have, they have, based on age, based on they have some um, um, problems, underlying problems. I say, but listen, if you don't take it and you got you catch the virus, you won't survive. The chances are much higher if you vaccinate and something happens, then you, your immune system will fight it. If you don't have a, a proper antibody to deal with the, the virus, then you, you're clearly putting yourself in serious danger. Okay, um, so Mr. Prime Minister, what advice does this hesitancy um, to accept the vaccine say about all of Indian people? But if you look at this, not just about Grenadian, eh? if you check it carefully, Worldwide, you see people supposed to be in developed countries um, saying all sorts of things and refusing to identify. Some people are even you using the religious conviction as the basis. But as far as I know, almost every single religious leader worldwide has come out in support of vaccination. But even then, there's the members of the congregation in different countries and different sections of the world are taking complete opposite position and given impression that it's a, a religious conviction and it certainly cannot be. Right. Dr. Mitchell, there's a direct relation. Is there a direct relation between the rate of vaccination and the recovery of the country? Yes, there's no doubt because as I was indicating, I think, um, yesterday in a piece that I did last night in St. Andrews. If you're a serious businessman and you want to, to get back to where you were as far as your business is concerned, if you do not, we do not have a herd immunity in the country, the chances are you won't be able to see the level of business activities that you used to see before. So as a businessman, you have a direct interest. If you are a, a cultural artist or promoter, if people do not vaccinate and you do not have herd immunity, the chances for you really getting to back where you were successfully so with your trade is not going to be there. So you have a personal interest and a vested interest in encouraging people. In fact, the, ministry, the COVID team and the Ministry of Health and the Cultural Ministry have been working with promoters to start activities. But one of the conditions is the patrons come in and must be vaccinated. So for you to become to that that activity, you have to show that you have been vaccinated to be able to gain interest. So the, the persons who want to enjoy themselves um, have a vested interest. The, 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 the promoters and the organizers who want, wish to, to continue to live by the income they generate from those activities have a vested interest. And also, the question of, of sports. We have a case here now. Because even then, without a, a herd immunity in the country, Grenada was asked recently, only last week, to take over hosting of the South African um, tour of the Caribbean. We were not on, this, on that schedule. Trinidad was because of the level of infection in Trinidad. They called and asked for we we become part host with St. Lucia and we have accepted. So if you had hoped to get back the level of sporting activities, the diversity of sporting activities, and to have the crowds back with you, then you must. I mean I, I know how hard it is because I, I played sports. And I think having the crowd with you is a serious motivation in your, as far as your performance is concerned. And I see now fellas have to be out there playing cricket without one person in the stadium. That's tough. You have to really psych up yourself to perform at the level that you normally used to. So sportsmen have a vested interest. And let's reason. We are all social animals. I mean, some people could live by themselves. Some people could let them become hermits, mm -hmm. and they have been, but not many people do that. I have great difficulty 
see, even if I cannot drink, I see some people sitting on the got drink, but I can't do it. I have to have somebody with me chatting, and I have to be around friends, family, and that whole con connection with your human being is so important. So even then, if you're taking of th thinking of the whole question of of connection with people, you have a vested interest in ensuring. So it, it, after all is said and done. We have little and no choice. Otherwise, we'll continue to have less and less of the things that we, we want to enjoy. And I mean, we say to people, I mean, there is a concern that we need to look at carnival. And I, I'm not saying that's something we should not, that we should not be not doing, but it, it must come with a clear question of the herd immunity concept. So the more we vaccinate, the more we prepare ourselves to keep the virus out, the higher the chance of us having the enjoyment and the carnival and the social activities that we wish to. Since the March lockdown of 2020, our economy has been under severe stress. Mm -hmm. um, how far is Grenada's economy from the breaking point? And how are, how are you able to keep it afloat in these trying times? If there was anything that breaking point, it would have to be in the first few months because it was the worst period. And I don't think you could say it was breaking point because of the the, um, the protection we have with the structural adjustment program and the savings that we are deep into our savings. And I can tell you, with the increasing tendency of, of activities that we are noticing, with the construction industry um, starting to to show upward movement, and with the level of 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 initial in these new activities coming, I see signs that we're starting to move forward. We're not where we were in 2019 yet, and that's why we keep telling our trade union brothers and sisters when we signed this agreement, the four percent increase it was in 2019 when the economy is another level. That's the point we are really making. So, I'm saying that it will take some time, but we're noticing. Every month we see in the custom revenues started increasing. We see inland revenue coming back up. They're not, as I said, not where we, where we were in 2019. But we see signs that we start to see movement. And with St. George's University coming back, and don't forget that's a key factor. Mm -hmm. People don't understand the impact of St. George's University on every one of our lives. Supermarkets are hurt yeah. because of the thousands of students that have been out and are back. They, they're coming back. The, the farmers used to sell a lot more products. The restaurants, the, the hotel sectors, the workers in a lady selling little of a thing that she makes home and going and selling them. They, they sell to, to, to these students. So St. John University, and don't, don't forget the, the level of apartment buildings with rentals and many of these people invested their entire life and family savings into building these facilities and they were empty for months, not, not bringing in a cent. It, that would have affected economic life in the country in a very serious way. So St. George's University coming will also show some serious impact on economic activity in the country. And with that, a number of ancillary activities will, will of course, be involved. All right? Mm -hmm. Dr. Mitchell, there is no doubt the way forward is, for, is through vaccination. What, what are other measures are you planning to utilize to woo Grenadians into getting the vaccine? Well, one of the things, I saw some in, in, interest in innovation. We, we say, why, why can't those persons that um, have bars say we're giving, we have been a vaccination day and we're giving you the first two bears free? <laughs> <laughs> I think you might see a few of us <laughs> taking the opportunity. I did mine already, so it wouldn't be attractive to me. Right. But they might attract some, some serious co co customers. I, I, I think. The, uh, Kentucky Fry, um, different firms, different organizations, uh, whatever area you're involved in, you mm -hmm. can bring out, take some initiative because the investment you're making today, as I said to you before, mm -hmm. will be bound to your benefit of your business later. later. So it seems to me that, that that is, I would say, some the people have to be much more involved in, in the process. And government can come with it different levels of, of incentives itself 
Mm -hmm. Just like the private sector will in encouraging and attracting people to do what they have to do. Some people say, why you have to attempt almost to bribe people? <laughs> well, you can say but it's a bribe, but I call it an incentive <laughs> to encourage people to protect themselves. Yes. Right? Okay. <laughs> Okay, and um, what does a vaccinated Grenada mean to you? I think maybe you spoke to it in parts. Yeah, yeah, what well, a vaccinated Grenada means that we are putting ourselves in a position that the world will see us as a place. We know Grenada has not always been an attractive place for people to come. We know our people are one of the warmest people in the region and the world. So people love to come here. The beauty, the people, and so on. But of course, the virus has introduced a new element in that equation. So if you are now vaccinated, it means, and there are a lot of countries that will not achieve that because of our small size, we can vaccinate faster than, and have herd immunity faster than a lot of countries. It seems to me, putting ourselves on, 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 as an attractive tourism sites and destination, not only that, for an investment um, area, where people realize, one, where the people are, are hardworking and productive, two, they are very warm people, the beauty of the country, and now they are responsible because they have now led in terms of the whole vaccination process. We have been providing serious attraction for all aspects. And people are thinking of bringing their children here to go to school. They want to come to a country where their children will not be the high probability of getting sick because of the lack of vaccination in the country. Okay, so true. The Minister of Health, Honorable Nicholas Steele, said on a radio program a few days ago, on June 27, the vaccines that are currently in supply will expire and there is no replacement stock so far. What does this mean for Grenada and its ability to achieve herd immunity? So it's, in fact, what they're saying is May is May 17th is the last day to get the first shot, mm -hmm. right? If you want to be fully vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said to them, whether or not I fall, I am able to get the two shots. Is better one better one is better than two. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, one is better, better than, than zero. So it seems to me, even if that date is passed. And I made a decision, for example, say May 30th, I may not get the second one. I certainly will not get the second one because the, the vaccine will expire. Mm -hmm. um, then you should still give me the first because it gives you an element of protection, of immunity, not what the two doses will do, but it certainly gives you a level of, of, of comfort. I think the, the, the percentage was, say, 60%. And when you do the second one, it brings you up to 90s. That's, that's what the, 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 the data is showing. So I hope we should not have to dump vaccines. That's the point I'm really making. It can be utilized, but not necessarily being able to vaccine the two, having the um, people having the two vaccinations. Okay. Okay, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, you have been in politics for more than three decades in Grenada. COVID-19, um, um, the coronavirus, your greatest challenge? I, I, to some extent, yes, I would say to some extent, but don't forget, Ivan was, Ivan was terrible, eh? Ivan terrible? Mm. Yes. Yes, he, he was terrible. Because it was a shock, and it was, at least you had announcements coming with the virus, mm -hmm. and you could psychologically prepare yourself. Ivan was like, Took shock. Surprise hit you and you get up in the morning and you see your whole country on the ground it's like everything you work for <laughs> disappeared overnight and the question of the challenge how do i start where do i start how do i get to rebuild this place temporarily so it was the worst i think anybody would have experienced as a as a, as a leader this is worse than a prolonged period because it affects every aspect of life for much longer period. But Ivan, in terms of the shock, was probably far more devastating to the human mind. Okay. What has COVID-19 taught you? Um, as a, and what has COVID-19 taught you about you and the Grenadian people? Well, it 
taught me one thing. You know, I, I value my constant interaction with people out in, in the field. Uh, I, I always, those who know me, politics is just another what we have demonstrated my own human spirit that I just like to do. We've always played sports. When I chose teaching, it was because I love kids. And I could be in a classroom talking to kids and helping them. So it does teach me how sometimes it's difficult to have to maintain that sort of um, feeling of, of warmth of people at the same time realize that the protection of the, the individual persons are more important than the, that normal interaction that you have. So I, I think it also tells me that all people, if guided up properly, will do what they have to do um, to protect themselves and by implication their family and their country. And I also say that it shows that Grenadians are very resilient people. Because let's face it, the government could talk as much as it's talking. We could do all the things. If we didn't have the level of support from some key people in the country, and the general support, not everybody, we would not have been able to be where we are today. Look around us in the region. We still have about 160-something um, kids from since February last year. When you, when you listen to some country, thousands, you know, they could just talk about nine deaths in Trinidad yesterday. Nine in one country in a day. At a month, you know. So I think we have to feel a sense of gratitude. And I think we I think um, we have to thank Almighty God for guiding us and, and of course protecting us in this time. And that the message we for people is let us continue to do what we have to do continuously and do, do not drop our guard. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Prime Minister, um, I know um, yesterday you have observed that um, tourism forum um, um, the, the importance of tourism in reviving the, the region's economy. Um, we're seeing a lot of hesitancy with persons taking the vaccine in, the, in that sector. Um, how do you see that playing out in terms of the emphasis we see being placed on tourism and the resistance of persons to take the vaccine and we have these projects? Um, on, that are on stream in terms of um, the beach house, non yes, etc. Yes. How do you see that playing out um, in terms well, of... Well, we, we have okay. said that we are not making it mandatory. There's no law that says that you have to vaccinate. But, let's face it, uh, you have a right to determine whether you are vaccinate. I have a right to determine that I must not get infected. So, if I have a business, and I decide I could be liable if I allow people to come into my facility and get infected, they can sue. And therefore, if I say to my workforce that you have to vaccinate, you have to vaccinate. If you want, to, if you want to keep your job. Okay, but did you see um, the the reluctance uh, maybe affecting? How do you see it affecting the investor confidence in terms of? No, I think the investor. I think people, if it's with the, the decision that they can improve their lives and their livelihood by vaccination, despite their fears, a lot of things we do, my dear, is because we feel obligated to do it, not necessarily we wish to do it. So I'm, I'm convinced the Grenadian man, when faced with that choice, he will make the right choice. So I'm just making the point, that's the point I really wanted to make, that while the government has taken the position that it's not going to force people, the individual businesses or institutions, whatever they are, it could be a sporting club that decide the members, if he wants to come in, they must vaccinate. There could be a hotel, um, facility that decide if you want to work here, they give you a time. You have to vaccinate. And it could be any other institutions. You have to vaccinate. That's the choice we have. If you don't want to, I heard Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez made a statement when he said that he's encouraging the public servants generally, but clearly he has to be public servants who are not necessarily permanent in the permanent establishment. And he said, look, we are not forcing. But if you do not have a vaccinated in certain places, 
you cannot come to work. And if you don't work, you can get paid. <laughs> that was a wild statement. So you see how it comes back to, to each of us individually to decide what we want to do. Now your choice could be, I, I don't want to work in that place anymore because I'm not vaccinated and I don't want to work. That's your choice, but nobody should force you to do so.